All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Statics. And in this video, we continue our use of the parallelogram law for vector addition of forces. And we're going to look at the last type of problem, which is determining the force resultant of three or more forces using the parallelogram law. When you have three or more forces, it just means you've got to apply the parallelogram law more than once or multiple times because you can only do the parallelogram parallelogram law two forces at a time so let's just go straight to an example so here's my system of forces f1 is pointing horizontally f2 is 40 kilonewtons at an angle of 45 degrees from the horizontal and I have f3 which is 70 kilonewtons and it is 55 degrees from the horizontal this way and I'd like to find the force resultant of all three vectors, which is essentially what I'm doing is adding F1 plus F2 plus F3. And because my parallelogram law can only go two forces at a time, and so I'm going to first focus on F1 plus F2, or any two vectors that you want, but here I'm just going to focus on this. I'll call this, I'm going to focus on summing this up first, which I'll call FR prime, and then I'm going to take that vector that I find, and I'm going to add F3, and that will give me FR like this. Just to give you a quick overview, in a nutshell, we're going to add two forces at a time. So here I'm going to create a parallelogram with F1 and F2. And then I'm going to calculate FR prime. And once I have FR prime, I'm going to create a parallelogram with FR prime and F3. This right here will be my total force resultant. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's show the details. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to sketch the parallelogram to find the resultant of F1 plus F2. And so now I'm going to draw lines parallel at the head of each vector. This is my concurrent point. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to F1 at the head of vector 2. And I'm going to draw a line parallel to F2 at the head of vector 1. And here is where the total resultant vector will point. And this would be my resultant vector. And I, I'm just going to choose one of my vector triangles. So here's my vector triangle. I know the angle from the horizontal for F2 is 45 degrees, which makes this angle here 135 degrees. And because I have two sides and the angle between them, I can use the law of cosines to get the magnitude of FR prime. So from the law of cosines, FR prime squared is, if I take the square root of both sides, that FR prime is 83.24 kilonewtons. And I need the direction of FR prime. And if I can figure out this angle right here, which I'll call theta, then I'll be able to know the direction of FR prime from the horizontal. And so from the law of sines, and here I know F2 is 40 and FR prime is 83.24 kilonewtons. So I can use this ratio to solve for theta. And I get theta is 19.9 degrees. And so that tells me that FR prime is 83.24 kilonewtons at an angle from the horizontal of 19.9 degrees. Now knowing FR prime, I can go back and look at my overall system again. So I figured out FR prime here. And now I'm going to add FR prime plus F3 to get the total resultant FR. I'm going to sketch another parallelogram to add these two vectors together. So here are my two force vectors that I'm adding together, FR prime and F3. Here's my concurrent point. And now I'm going to draw parallel lines from the head of each vector. I'm going to take a line that's parallel to FR prime and draw it at the head of F3. Boom, like that. And then I'm going to take a line that's parallel to F3 and draw it from the head of FR prime. Boom, like that. And here is where my force resultant will point. And so my total resultant vector will be an arrow that points from the concurrent point to the intersecting point here. And this is FR. And now I got to pick a triangle and apply my geometry relationships, law of cosines, law of sines, to find the magnitude and direction of FR. So I'll pick the triangle on the left. You can pick either one. 
All right, so here's my vector triangle. I know that from the horizontal, FR prime is an angle of 19.9 degrees. And I know that this angle from parallel lines and this intersecting angle for F3, this is 55 degrees, which makes this total angle here is 55 plus 19.9 degrees, which is 74.9 degrees. I know two sides and the angle between them, so I can use the law of cosines. So from the law of cosines, and if I take the square root, I get that the magnitude is 93.77 kilonewtons. And if I want to find the angle of the force resultant relative to the horizontal, so I'm interested in this angle here, I'll call that beta. Well, it'll help me if I can figure out what this angle is right here, call that phi. And so from the law of sines, I could say that, and I know the magnitudes of FR prime, this is 83.24 kilonewtons, and we found the magnitude of the total resultant, which is 93.77. So now I can straight up solve for phi using these ratios, and I get phi is 59 degrees. And so my final result, or my final answer, is that FR is equal to 93.8 kilonewtons with an angle relative to the horizontal of 59 degrees. And what this also means is that the force system that I had in the beginning, this thing right here, this force system is equal to one single force resultant with a magnitude of 93.8 kilonewtons at an angle of 59 degrees. All right, that's one example. Let's try one more. So I got another example given three forces acting on this pin. So here's my force system, and I want to find the force resultant of all three forces. And just like before, we're going to take it two vectors at a time, or we're just going to add up two vectors at a time. I'm looking at F2 and F3. Doesn't matter which way you go. Like I could do F1 and F3 first. I can add them together and then add F2 to it. Or I could add F1 and F2 and then add that to F3. So here in this case, I'm just going to add up F2 and F3. I'll call that FR prime. And then to get the total resultant, I'm going to take that and I'm going to add F1 to it like this, and that would be my second step. All right, so let's go ahead and get it started. So the parallelogram for adding F2 plus F3, I gotta take the vectors, I'm gonna connect them at their tails. So here's my concurrent point, and now I'm gonna draw my parallelogram. I'm gonna draw a line parallel to F2 from the head of F3, and I'm gonna draw a line parallel to F3 from the head of F2 Yes, and here, this intersecting point right here is where the force resultant will point from the concurrent point. This orange vector is what I will call FR prime. Yes. All right, so now I just got to pick a triangle and set up my vector triangle and apply the law of cosines and law of sines to determine the magnitude and direction of FR prime. So I'll pick the triangle that's on top and here. So here's the vector triangle I'm interested in. I know that the angle relative to the horizontal for F3 is 40 degrees, which makes this also 40 degrees. And because F2 is straight up and down, I know that the angle on the inside here is 50 degrees and let's see i know the magnitude of f3 that's 500 newtons i know the magnitude of f2 is 650 i have two sides and the angle in between and so i can apply the law of cosines to get the magnitude of fr prime so here's a magnitude of fr prime and i can get the direction relative to the horizontal, which would be this angle right here, which I'll call theta. And I can find that out if I can figure out this angle right here, which I'll call phi. And from the law of sines, I can figure out phi. 
And based on this ratio, I know I already know that F2 is 650 newtons, and I just solved FR prime, which is 504.67 newtons. And so I have these rate, I have this ratio, and I can solve for phi. This will tell me that phi is 80.63 degrees. And more importantly, that's going to tell me when I look over here that theta is equal to phi minus 40 degrees, which is and this will be 40.63 degrees. And that means my final answer for FR prime is, is a magnitude of 504.67 newtons at an angle relative to the horizontal of 40.63. All right, so now that I've calculated FR prime, I want to go back and I'm going to add F1 plus FR prime together to determine the resultant FR. Then all I got to do is draw the parallelogram that represents this vector equation. So again, I'm going to take the vectors, I'm going to take F1 and FR prime and draw them with their tails together. So there's F1, which is 30 degrees from the horizontal, and FR prime is 40.63 degrees from the horizontal, like this. Here's my concurrent point, and now I got to draw parallel lines from the head of each vector. And so I'm going to take a line parallel to FR and draw it at the head of F1. And I'll take a line that's parallel to F1 and draw it from the head of FR prime. And this point here, where those two par two lines intersect, and you see by our parallelogram here, this is, the, or the direction of the resultant from the concurrent point. And so here, this. So now I got these very thin looking triangles, but I just got, it's you know, it's the same process. I got to pick one to form my vector triangle. And then again, use law of cosines, law of sines to find the magnitude and direction of the resulting FR. And so here, let's see, I'll choose the upper triangle. And looking at that, um, from the horizontal, that FR prime is 40.63 degrees. And I was given earlier this F1. 400 newtons fr prime so this is previously known information and i have let's see i have two sides i'm trying to find fr so i need this angle in the middle here if i look a little closer and if i think about this horizontal line which is parallel to the line up here i know this angle right here is 30 degrees and i know if i let's see draw a line straight down this angle is 90 and then this angle right here is 90 minus 40.63 degrees which is 49.37 degrees and in order for me to implement or use the law of cosines you know i really need this total angle here from here to here it's a funky line and let's see i'll call that angle gamma and so gamma is 30 degrees plus the 90 degrees plus the 49.37 degrees which is equal to 169.37 degrees. So now that I've figured out that geometry, I have two sides and the angle in between. And so now I can determine the magnitude of FR using the law of cosines. And so here from the law of cosines, FR squared is, and I get that the magnitude of this resultant is 900.8 Newtons. All right, so close. And now we want to find the direction of FR. And we really want to know the direction of FR with respect to either a vertical line or a horizontal reference line. And in this case, it's pretty. the horizontal reference line is pretty accessible here. And that would be this angle right here, we'll call this beta. And in order for me to get that, you know, I already know 30 degrees to the red line or to F1. Really, I just need the angle in between here, right here. And I'll call that angle alpha. And to find that angle, I just use the law of sines. So from the law of sines, sine of alpha over the side opposite, which is FR prime. 
sine of alpha over the opposite side, fr prime, is equal to the sine of that angle gamma, which was 169.37, and the side opposite was fr. And here, this is just really one equation, one unknown. We know this fr prime is 504.67 newtons, and fr is 900.8 newtons. And now, I just got to solve for alpha here. And alpha is 5.93 degrees, which makes this total angle beta is 30 plus alpha, and that's 35.93 degrees. And my final answer would be that FR, the resultant, is equal to 900.8 newtons at an angle of 35.93 degrees from a horizontal reference. This is the final answer. All right, so hopefully this gave you a nice overview and understanding of how to use the parallelogram law to solve for problems with three or more forces and we're trying to calculate them and just really adding vectors together. The fact of the matter is there's a better way to do all this and in fact this is quite tedious and that's why I'm not going to do more than three. Uh, the next lesson coming up is on adding vectors in Cartesian components and that's the way that's the most efficient way but this you know the parallelogram law is awesome because it lets you visualize what you're doing and, and gives you kind of a, a visual of how everything is working together all right hopefully this is useful take it easy search free